that? All right. Hey, we're going to try this again. You're live. All right, cool. We, well, last time I was sideways, and apparently I didn't do something right, which is per pretty much par for the course, you know. Um, but this time we're going to try it again. Looks like it's good. Uh, this time looks, we're good. Looks good. All right, cool. Well, so, like I was saying before, this will be my second video I did today. For some reason, the full video is not uploading to uh, Facebook. It says something is going wrong. Yeah, you know what's going wrong on Facebook is... Okay, besides that, <laughs> um, we're working against powers and principalities in heavenly places. Okay, which means that the evil one roams about to and fro on the earth like a lion, lion looking for who to devour. It says it in the Bible, and it's the truth. Remember, whatever's in the Bible is the truth. That's the way it goes. Accept it or don't. But I'm telling you, that's what it is. And at the end of days, you're going to find out when you're dead, because you're going to die, you're going to be in front of Jesus. And it says that every knee will bow. That being said, you're going to find out what lies were on earth, what things that you got conned, what things that they made you believe that wasn't really the truth, and things that you thought were the truth, they made them seem like they were lies. And they made the, like they made, um, I was just reading today, where it says um, one of the top announcers, I don't know, CNN, whatever, news announcer, whatever, some big wig, said that um, Christians are forced to believe fairy tales like Noah's Ark. So, um, you know, that guy's going to find out the hard way, too. When the time comes that he's wrong and that the Bible is a real thing. But, you know, like I said, every knee will bow and every, t every tongue will confess the name of Jesus. So, really, that's all I have to worry about. And that's all you have to worry about. <clears throat> so, what we're going to do today, we're actually going to tell you about hell. We're going to tell you where, what hell is uh, what it, and what it is not. Okay, and try to uh, let you know certain verses and certain certain parts of the Bible that describe hell, and just so you understand that it's a real place, and that the, you should actually, I, I would imagine, have a little bit of a fear of it, because if you know what a bad thing is, then you may stay away from it, like, um, you know, climbing the side of a mountain. You know, what's, what's going to happen? You know, there's a possibility of you falling off and dying. Okay? Being afraid of motorcycles. I know some guy today, I don't personally know him, but uh, in the area, I think in Newark, somebody was run over by an 18-wheeler. A guy on a motorcycle. Okay? And you have to realize what kind of gamble you're taking being on a motorcycle. Okay, there's no steel wrapped around you. You have no roll cage. You have no protection whatsoever except some piece of plastic on your head that maybe will sa save your brain. But it won't stop you from becoming a quadriplegic or losing a limb or, or dying, you know, for internal bleeding. Again, apparently this guy got run over by an 18-wheeler and apparently all the wheels went over him. All the wheels. So... You know, and that happened today around 2 o'clock. So, somebody today may have lost their father or their son or their brother. Got it? Or their dad. It's horrible. It's horrible. And the, the first thing that goes through my mind is, did they know Jesus? Because if they didn't know Jesus and they're dead, that means they're in hell right now. Or, correctly, if you read it in the Bible, they are in Hades. Okay? Hades is the waiting spot for hell. And I believe paradise is the waiting point for heaven. So, what you do, you go there, and then when God judges you, because you will be judged the second time, you will be judged after you die. And God will say, well, I'm going to read that to you. And he's going to, you know, condemn you to hell, which is the second death. So, um... We're going to start at the beginning. So, Lord, thank you for being here. 
Uh, please open up the ears of all these people and, and, your, and your children who you want to hear this, Lord, this message, whatever it is that's going to come out of my mouth. Okay, I have no idea sometimes because I'm not following a script. I have a couple things that I want to tell you, but, you know, it can go in any direction. So, that being said, beware. <laughs> or be aware. One or the other. Beware to be aware. Um, so, we're going to tell you again what happens and what hell is. But let's start with a little psalm. I don't know what we're going to start with. Let's see. Rise, Lord, our Father, Psalm 121. Yeah, how about that? Psalm 121. It's called, The Lord is My Keeper. And it's Psalm 121, so that's what it is. So if you want to read along, get out a Bible, go to Psalm 121, and you can read the words. And um, uh, just so you know, I'm, this is not copyright infringement because I own and wrote all this material. And you're allowed to use it. And once you start making money on it, well, then you got to start paying me. But if you just want to use it and you're not making money on it, you can use it and use it forever. Got it? That's the way it works. But if you make money, well, then it's my intellectual property, so you're going to have to pay me somehow. That's the way that works. <laughs> this is Psalm 121. Psalm 
For 40 years, for 40 years, 40 years, they went through the desert. They couldn't get out of the desert. They went around and around. You know they went around the same mountain for 40 years? Yep. But he provided for them. Six out of seven days, he gave them manna that came from the sky. I don't care if you don't understand it. The bottom line is if it says it in the Bible, that's what happened. They were provided food. They were provided water in the desert. They were provided shade. The Lord gave them shade in the desert. How about that? What's probably one of the most important things you can have in the desert? Um, shade <laughs> and water. What do you think? Yeah. It says in the Bible that for 40 years, their shoes did not wear out. 40 years. Now think real hard. What's sandpaper made out of? Right. Alex, I'll take sand for $100. Got it? So sandpaper is made out of sand. For 40 years, their shoes didn't wear out. How about that? God's pretty good, huh? Pretty good. Yeah, he's pretty good. I think he's better than that, but that's okay. You can call him whatever you want. Because, again, like I said in the beginning, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess the name of Jesus. When you are dead, when you are standing in front of Jesus, and we're going to go through this thing, and I'm going to explain to you what, if you are born once, you will die twice. And if you are born twice, you will only die once. We're going to explain what that means. We're going to explain where it says the second death and the final death. I want you to understand what this takes and where we're going with this. And we're going to probably end up reading from uh, Revelation. Where's my glasses? My other glasses. Yeah, these are the ones. Look how big my eyes are. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it is what it is. Let's see, what we're going to do is we read, what's Matthew 5.22? We're going to go to Matthew 5.22 and see exactly what that says. It must say something about death. Matthew 5.22, baby. Come on, baby. Where is it? Matthew 5.22. It says, uh, 22, Matthew, but I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother, hmm. now this has nothing to do with that, but I'm going to read it to you anyway, Matthew 4, uh, 522, uh, 522, but I say to you, uh, anyone, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the, of the judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, shall be in danger of the council. But whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Hellfire. You know, they talk about hell quite a bit. And especially in, uh, what I was looking at was, I looked up in, um, on Google or something like that. And I looked up for a uh, hundred, or actually came up a hundred Bible verses about hell. And I actually just looked up. Bible verses about hell. And I hit search in the Google engine, search engine, and um, it brought me up to this one page that said 100 Bible verses about hell. And it was a pretty interesting read. I started reading, and then I realized there was 100 of them, and I didn't have enough time to read all 100 of them. But, you know, if there's 100 Bible verses about hell, my money is that there's a hell. Okay? It's a real thing. It's something that you have to be aware of. And what I'm going to start to do is I'm going to read from <clears throat> Revelation 20. And um, it tells a lot about hell. And it tells, well, you're going to find out. And I will explain some of the things there. Revelation 20. Man, there's a lot of good stuff in Revelation Revelation 20. Look at that. It's about death and hell. Well, again, you know, other sections too. But this is something. Wait, let me turn down my volume of the guitar. Guitar. <clears throat> so I tell you, this is my second video I'm making today. 
because I'm unable to upload a video. And now I'm live because I was on suspension and because I said a bad thing. I had posted, I reposted a meme that somebody already posted. So apparently the person who posted it was allowed to post it because all I did was repost it and I got banned for a month for go, from, from going live. Now, I don't know what reposting a meme has to do with banning me from going live. It wasn't like I did something live video that was derogatory or wrong or against community standards. Ready? Air quotes. Facebook community standards. So it wasn't that, but this is what they banned me for. You know why? Because the evil one knows there's power in this. That's why. Because the evil one knows that we are accomplishing the Great Commission by doing this. That's what he understands. And that's what I'm going to keep doing. So, and he keeps trying to throw curveballs at me like, I can't upload this, I can't do that. Now we have to, with the phone, it's just all about kind of complicated. And it doesn't matter. Because there's going to be a way that I'm going to continue to do these videos. There really is, because there's someone out there that needs to hear this. And it says, heaven will rejoice even if one person is saved. One. Heaven will rejoice. In heaven there is God, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And there's a multitude. There is a host of angels. Host is another number for, another name for a humongous number. Millions and billions of angels are in heaven. And they celebrate when one person gets saved. Okay, so that's how important this is, what I'm doing, and what you could do. You have to go, and if you could share this sometime, somehow, that would be really appreciated, because by you sharing this, this is also helping you perform the Great Commission. And you need to perform the Great Commission, too. Everyone does, because Jesus said, as his last command, and we're going to cover this every single time, he said, quote, "...go and make disciples of the nations." And baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That was his last command before he was crucified. So I would bet that it was pretty important that he said that and what he said it was important. If it was the very last thing, his command, his last command. So, again, that's something to think about. You know, consider that. It wasn't like the first thing he said, he didn't say it years beforehand. He said, oh, remember what I said before? It was the last thing he said. Last command he gave. So anyway, we're going to read Revelation 20. Revelation 20 says, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. When God comes back, and when Jesus comes back, it says we live with him for a thousand years on heaven. You know, the people who are saved, the people who are going to heaven. Okay, well, let me read more of this, and you'll understand. But, I mean, and that is the point under which and by when the devil will be bound for a thousand years. And then he's going to let him go again. I don't understand this. I don't understand why. Okay? I don't understand how. I don't understand any of it, really. I'm explaining it to you. And anybody who says that they completely understand what the Bible says and means 100% is a liar. Okay? Realize that. So don't believe any man that says he understands the Bible 100%. That's impossible. So, it really is. So let me read on. Okay, so he laid his hand on the dragon. He cast him into the bottomless pit. He cast the devil into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal on him so that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. So God's going to bind the devil. After he returns, the saints are going to live for another thousand years. For a thousand years. And you have to understand that, you know, living a thousand years wasn't 
was designed by God. I think Adam lived 930 years. Beelzebub, I believe, uh, Beelzebub? No, 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 I'm sorry. Um, oh, because of an M. Well, somebody lived to be 600 and, uh, uh, 967 years old. Can't think of his name right now. Man. Um, and uh, so, I mean, everybody lived to be a long time. Noah was, you know, hundreds of years old. I think it was like 500 before he had a child. Uh, again, you know, it's hard for us to conceive of this. This was before the flood. This is how God designed us. He designed us to live a thousand years. You know that? But after the flood, he said, man will no longer live longer than 120 years. Okay, we were fallen. We were in a fallen state. It was a fallen earth. All kinds of things went bad. You know, I have to realize within 10 pages of the Bible, he, God said in Genesis 6-6 six, six, that he, he was grieved that he had made man. This is God. This is our perfect God. And to think that he was grieved that he made us, Hey, why don't you look out your window? Why don't you turn on your TV set and watch the news? Got it? Yeah, I'm sure he was grieved that he made man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And we are in the state of de-evolution. It's just getting worse and worse. It's horrible. But the devil wants you to think that this is the smartest time of mankind with all our technolo technological advantage and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and everything that's being taken away from us. It's horrible, but, you know, that's okay, because Jesus is coming back. We are in the final days. We really are in the end days. It says where uh, man will call good evil and evil good. So, we're getting back to the Bible. So, now we are up to uh, Revelation 24. Uh, and I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded, for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. Did you hear that? So the people who died for Christ and the people who were saved and the people who were Christians and died in Christ get to live and rule and reign with Christ for a, hundred, for a thousand years. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. We're saying you're born once, you die twice. So, when you're born, you, you, when you're born of your mother, you live and you're going to die. Again, everybody dies. Everybody dies. So you're going to die, and that's known as the first death. After the first death, you get to stand in front of Jesus. Now, you may not be judged immediately, but you kind God kind of knows where you're going. Okay, he knows, again, he knows the beginning from the end. It's not like you're going to change his mind or anything like that. So what, what's happening is that you get to be, you are sent to Hades or Paradise. That is like the holding cell. That's like the area where... You are, let's say, it's a holding cell is what it is, okay? And you are sent to Hades, and there's more, all kinds of things in the Bible about Hades. And, um, and then you are condemned after then, then from Hades, God takes you up from Hades. If, if you're condemned to hell, if you're condemned to go to hell, then your holding spot is Hades. And in Hades, again, like we talked about last time, uh, the rich man and the poor man. The rich man, when the rich man died, he was sent to Hades. And the poor man, Lazarus, was sent and was in the bosom of Abraham. And I'm going to guess that that was paradise. Okay, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the, the Bible of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Well, these are important people. Again, Isaac was dead. Abraham was dead. Lazarus was dead. And so was the rich man. But the rich man had been condemned to Hades right after he died. Immediately after he died, the rich man went to Hades and Lazarus went to paradise and was in the bosom of Abraham. 
you can read all that or you can go to my last video and you can find out exactly what it is because that's what I covered in the last video. So, it keeps saying Hades did exist. It was in Matthew 16, maybe? I don't know. I'd have to go back and check my notes. Okay? So, um, again, it's a place. Let me see. Was it in Matthew? Matthew 5. Oh, well, I don't have it. So, anyway, um, I don't have it right on me, but I could look for it. Uh, so, we're in uh, 20. Uh, but the rest of the dead did not live again until after the thousand years were finished. So, for a thousand years, if you're going to Hades, you're going to be in Hades for a thousand years. Until you get judged again. Until he judges everyone. So, the, the people who are going to heaven are in paradise for a thousand years. Whoever's going to hell is in Hades for a thousand years. And it says in Hades that um, he did not have water because he asked Abraham to let Lazarus the poor man, dip his finger in water and at least give him a sip so that he could have a drop of water in Hades. That's what the rich man said. Because he was in torment, he also said that. So if he's in torment in Hades and wants a drop of water from the finger of Lazarus, it must be pretty horrible in Hades. And that's, he didn't even go to hell yet. That's just Hades, that he's going to have to be there a thousand years, minimally. Now, all the people that died before today, they're in Hades already. And they're waiting in Hades. And then, they're going to have to wait another thousand years after Christ um, comes back, okay, in order to be judged. And you know what? They're going to want to be in Hades rather than in hell. And it already says they're in torment. You have to understand this about hell. This is the choice that you're going to make. This is the choice that you have to make. And that's the most important decision you can make in your entire life. The most important decision you get to make in your entire life is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you will not go to hell. In fact, when you die, you will go to paradise. And then when you are judged then you will be let into heaven where you get to live with God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Got it? They will be with you in heaven. In fact, they will be the light. If you read, uh, I forget where it was, but it says they are the light. You don't need a sun in heaven because the light is God and the light is Jesus. I'm going to read more of this. Revelation. Um... Blessed and holy is he who has part in the first resurrection. Over such, the, over such, the second death has no power. Remember we said the second death, you died twice. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Got it? The people who do not experience the second death will reign with God and Christ for a thousand years. They're all good words. <laughs> you can read it. Revelation uh, 26. Okay, then we're up to Revelation 27. Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle whose number is as C, uh, has, uh, and whose number is as the sand of the sea. So there's going to be a lot of people. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. How much sand is in the sea? I'm going to say a lot. Okay. They went up to the breadth of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And the fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and the false prophet are. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. In hell. 
they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so that's where the devil, the false prophet, and the beast will be. Maybe that's their triune. I don't know, like God, Holy Spirit, and and, and um, Jesus. Maybe it's the beast, the false prophet, and the devil. Maybe that's the way that works. Again, I don't know. And I hope I never find out. I hope you never find out. Okay, but realize where they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. So it's not just forever. He says forever and ever. Okay, that's where he will be tormented for day and night, the angel, uh, the devil, the false prophet, and the beast. 2011, Revelation. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. Remember I said last time everything's written in the book? Well, these books were opened, okay? And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's where you want your name written. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. Okay? Everybody has a book. Everybody has a book with your name on it. And your book's going to be opened. And your book, and he's going to, you're going to be judged by the deeds that were written in your book. You will be judged. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. Remember, I said all them people went to Hades. Okay? They went to Hades as their waiting point to be judged. And it says death and Hades gave up their dead. And death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. Remember I said you die twice? If you're a bad man and you're going to hell, the second death is when you're cast into hell. This is the second death. That is in Revelation 20, 14, I guess you would call that 14b. This is the second death. Again, we're going to 2015. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. I'm going to read that again to you. If your name isn't in the book of life, in order to get your name into the book of life, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's how you get your name written into the book of life. I'm going to say it again. The way you get your name written into the book of life is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's the way that happens. And if not, and anyone not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. Now, we covered this last time also in Matthew, that if you're thrown into the lake of fire, like the rich man and the poor man, there's a great divide between heaven and hell, between paradise and Hades. There's a great divide. And even if you want, even if Lazarus wanted to, or Abraham, or anybody wanted to give a drop of water to the rich man, he was unable to do so because there's a great divide between heaven and hell, between Hades and paradise, and you cannot go there. You cannot go there. And when God says you cannot go there, you cannot go there. So there's no such thing as um, um, purgatory, and you can't pray anybody from one place to another. It says it in Matthew, and it says it here too. 
Once you're there, you're there. When you're condemned to Hades and the lake of fire, well, then that's where you're going. The lake of fire. Lake of fire. Does that sound fun? Where you will be tormented. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get back to that one other line. And they will be torna tormented day and night forever and ever in the lake of fire with the devil, the beast, and the false prophet. I mean, these are all just uh, big terms and big words. It's just a horrible thing. Hold on a second. Hey, Amber! Yeah. Can you keep it down a little bit? Okay. Sorry. It's my daughter. she got a big mouth. I wonder where she gets it. <laughs> we're going to keep reading Revelation. Now we're up to Revelation 21. Revelation 21. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Remember I told you before, and I've said it a million times, I'm going to say more. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will remain forever. So he tells you that heaven and earth will pass away. He said this before in the Bible, not in Revelation. He said it way before that. But my word will remain forever. Now we're in Revelation, and he's saying the same thing, that heaven and earth will pass away. Okay? Where heaven, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Isn't that interesting? There would be no more sea. Okay. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. I wonder if the tabernacle of God is Jesus. I don't know. I would have to do more research on that. But he's using it as like a noun. Like uh, as a personal pronoun. The tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. This is in heaven. God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be, there shall be no more death. Remember, the people in heaven are not condemned to a second death. They get to live forever. So, you're born once, you die once, and because you were only born once of your mother, and you weren't reborn as a Christian of the Holy Spirit and of water, you are condemned to a second death, a final death, which is hell, where you will be tormented day and night forever and ever. That's the second death. But anybody who's born twice only gets to die one time and then gets to live with Jesus forever in heaven. Born twice is born of your mother. And the second time being born while you're living here on earth is born of water and the spirit. That means getting baptized as an adult, as a cognizant, conscientious adult. Someone who understands what it takes to be saved and to be born again. And to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Remember, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you. I admit that I'm a sinner and I repent of all my sins. I know that your son, Jesus, died for my salvation. I believe he rose from the dead and I accept him into my life. That's what you have to understand in order to be born again. Okay? That being said, that's the second, that, that's what it needs. Go born once, die twice. Born twice, die once. And like I said before, uh, Nicodemus, I mispronounced it the first time. I said Nicodemus. Yeah, I saw that. My bad. I'm not perfect. I have an eraser on my pencil too. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, it's Nicodemus. He was the one who said to Jesus, how is one to be born again? Are we to climb back into our mother's womb? And then Jesus had to explain it to him. That you're born of water in the spirit. That's how you were reborn. You don't climb back into your mother's womb to be born again. 
Okay, but you have to be born again before you die so that you can only die one time. Let's see. Uh, then I, John, then I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, okay, we saw that, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be, turn the page, there shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. And then, sorry, then, this is 21.5, then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. This is what John had this revelation when he was on the island of Patmos. Patmos? Am I saying that right? Pathos? Patmos? Anyway, he was like 90 years old, and this is the revelation that God gave him. That's why it's called Revelation. It's not doesn't have an S on Revelation. It's not Revelations. It's Revelation. No S on there. And this is what God told John to write down. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain, of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Jesus also said he was the living water. Again, these are all good things. And these are things... Okay, wait. Let me just keep... He who overcomes shall inherit all things. And that's us. If we overcome the earth, if we overcome the bad things, if we get past it and stay true to God and stay as born-again Christians and keep the faith until we die, we shall inherit all things. And I will be his God and he shall be my son. Not glorious, but the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Okay? If you want to read it for yourself when you die twice, what the second death is, is when you, as a liar or a thief or an idolater or as a sorcerer or whatever, shall have their part, which means you will be cast into, the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now that's Revelation 21, 8. If you need to go back over that, and see exactly what the second death is. What it is, what it means, where it's uh, uh, definitely just spelled out in the Bible. And this is very much toward the end of Revelation. I think this is the end of Revelation, in fact. Uh, 22, yeah, Revelation ends in chapter 22. And we're on chapter 21. He's telling you at the end of the book. I'm reading the end of the book. So, it's kind of like, we know it happens at the end. Like, we, we joke like, oh, we're not afraid of uh, the evil one, because we know, we read the end of the book, we know what happens at the end. Well, now you know what happens at the end, too. And what happens to the people who don't believe in Jesus and have not accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you will be cast into the lake of fire. Which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven sword, uh, had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, talk to John, come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Okay? We are the bride. The church is the bride. We are the bride. Whenever you hear the bride, we are the bride. Us Christians, us believing Christians are known as the bride. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Um, I don't know if it says it right here, but it tells you what the size of the new Jerusalem will be. It says it will be 1,500 miles cubed, high, wide, and deep. So 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide, and 1,500 miles high. That will be the New Jerusalem. 
Don't ask me, man. I'm just telling you what it says. Let me see if it says it here, but that's what it says. All right, so, uh, having the glory of God, descending, right, the holy Jerusalem descending out of heaven and of earth. Having the, the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three on the north, three on the south, and three on the west. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates, and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Oh, 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 well, this is where we are. How about that? The city, the New Jerusalem, that's going to come down from heaven. The New Jerusalem, the length is as, uh, is as great as its breadth. So it's as long as it is wide. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length breadth and height are equal. So what did I just say? It's a cube. And if you look for how big is, what did I say, 12,000 furlongs? Wait, where was it? Yes, 12,000 furlongs. All you have to do is do a Google search, see how long a furlong is, and then multiply it by 12,000. And it comes to 1,500 miles. So it's 1,500 miles long, 1,500 miles wide. So let's just say it's approximately the size of the land west of the Mississippi. All that land, if it was a cube, it's approximately the size of the land west of the Mississippi if the Mississippi almost divides our country in half. Okay? Because I think from Maine to Florida is 1,500 miles. So let's say from Portland, Washington, and from Washington State to the bottom of California is 1,500 miles. Okay? That's how big it's going to be, the New Jerusalem. And the same distance high. And it's length and uh, then he measured it with the 100. Uh, then he measured its wall, 144 cubits, according to the measure of the man, that is of an angel. Again, I, you know, we're I don't understand what all this stuff means. Just so you know, but I'm reading it to you. Okay, the construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The fountains. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third, the fourth emerald. <laughs> I don't know. Shal, Chalcedony? I don't know what that is. Okay. Uh, the fifth, sardonyx. The sixth, sardius. The seventh, chrysolite. I don't know what that is. The eighth, beryl. The ninth, topaz. The tenth. Cry so praise. Okay, I don't know. The eleventh jacinth and the twelfth amethyst. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls. Uh, okay, and it just goes on to say. So, I just wanted you to understand what it says in the Bible about the second death. And when I say to you that the first death and the second death and uh, Revelation, oh Matthew twenty four. 41. Let's, so I think it says more about hell there. So Matthew 24, 41. Matthew 24, 41, baby. You have to understand. Because if you're not understanding, you're not listening to what I'm saying, I want you to know what it says in the Bible about hell. Okay? Matthew uh, 25, 41. Matthew 25, 41. says... Then he will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, departed from the devil and his angels. Okay, so that's what God's going to say to you if you don't know him 
when you're standing in front of him. Okay? He's going to say to you, Matthew 25, 41. Then he will also say to those on his left hand, so apparently the people that are going to hell are on his left, depart from me, you curse, you cursed, cursed, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Remember we said the devil and his angels are going to be thrown into the lake of fire forever and ever? forever and ever? Okay, well, that's where you're going to. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he's going to say, depart from me, and he's going to cast you into the everlasting, excuse me, the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. How about that? That's what you get look, to look forward to. Now, if I were you, man, I would take the bet and I'd say, Jesus exists. I don't understand it. My mind is too small to, to understand what God is and how awesome God is. But if he says he loves me and he said that Jesus was his son and he sent him to die for my sins, I'm going to believe him. I'm going to have blind faith and believe that God is awesome. And if God is so awesome that he created me and everything that I know, then he's awesome enough to keep his promise to me. Because he doesn't lie. He cannot lie. He will not lie. He loves you. He made you. And if he did all these things, well then, he's able to do exactly what he says here. He's able to cast you into the lake of fire forever and ever. With devil and his angels. Man, I don't know why what it takes to get to you to accept this free gift of grace and salvation. It's free. You don't even have to pay for it. You don't have to do anything for it. He doesn't care what you did yesterday. He wants you to come to him right now and accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. And then whatever happens between now and then is between you and him. Okay? Oh, we're going to read something else. Let's see what else. What else does it say? Matthew 5.22. All right, let's go to Matthew 5.22. Matthew 5.22. 22.22. 22. Matthew 5.22. That's from, what is that? Matthew 5.22. Hut, hut. Omaha. <laughs> oh, man, this fan is blowing me all over the place over here. Matthew 5.22. But I say to you that whoever is angry with his brother, oh, that's what I read before, shall be in the danger of hellfire. If you're angry with your brother, you're still a possibility of you burning in hellfire. Let me see, Matthew 13, 50. Matthew 13, 50. Matthew 12, 13, 50? Huh, 13, 50. And cast them into the furnace of fire. So, okay, let's go to 49. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Okay, so they're going to pick out the good people and the bad people. And cast the bad people into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. In the lake of fire, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. So, let's, let's, let's just expand on that. So, if there's going to be wailing and gnashing of teeth, that means that you're going to be able to wail, and you wail through cries through your mouth. So, you're going to have a mouth. You're going to probably have a head if you have a mouth. I doubt there's going to be just a mouth there. And I'm going to say that you might even have a body. You know, since the body is attached to the, you know, the neck bone's connected to the head bone. and the head, You know what I mean? That's the way it works. So, now you're going to have a head because there's going to be gnashing of teeth. That's not going to be a good thing. It also says, I don't have it right here, where the worm will eat upon your flesh. So, you're going to have flesh in hell. You're going to have teeth. You're going to be thirsty. And you're going to be able to feel torment. So, my money is you're going to have a body in hell. 
because it's eating at your skin and you're going to be able to gnash your teeth. Are you willing to take that bet? Are you willing to take that chance? That there is no hell and there is no God and that this is just a book. Because if you are, well then you've be, been deceived by the evil one. That's who you've been deceived by. He's the great deceiver. Lie, kill, and destroy. That's, I believe that's his M.O. Like, you know, your job description? Let me see. Who can fill this? It says you need to kill, lie, and destroy. Anybody? And the devil's like, I got that. Because that's what he does. That's what he does. And you're going to have to take part, and you will be his, uh, you'll be there with him. I don't know if you actually see him. I don't know if his job is to torment you or God's job is to, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know, and I hope I never find out. I won't. I'm a born-again Christian. I didn't say I was perfect. And he doesn't want you to be perfect either. He wants you to come to him as you are right now. Got it? He just wants you to come to him. And I think we're going to sing another song. I don't know what we're going to sing. Let's see. Let's see what we're going to sing. You are God. You are the light of the world, my God. I want to spend it with you. All right, let's see if I can reach this note.
spend it with you. Anyway, hopefully this thing stayed live. Hopefully everything's fine. And hopefully I'm out of <laughs> jail. <laughs> and hopefully this worked and everything's okay. So anyway, I love you. Uh, until next time, uh, which is probably going to be on a Sunday, because this is Wednesday. So anyway, uh, I love you. I thank you, and I thank you for listening, and if you ever need to contact me, Frank Rocks Jesus at Yahoo.com. I got a Facebook page. I got uh, a web page. I got all kinds of things. If you ever want to get baptized, FrankRocksJesus.com. Talk to me at Yahoo.com. That's my email. Contact me. We'll go. We'll get baptized, and you can start your forever life. You will be able to determine your future and your eternity. You will be alive forever and you will not experience the second death where you will be cast into the flames forever and ever, the lake of fire, forever and ever. I hope that's not you. I really, really pray that that's not you. Okay, I love you. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.